Hi, uh, welcome everyone uh, to this session of uh, getting started with uh, kernel-based virtual machine. Uh, I'm Leonard. Uh, I'm originally from Malaysia. However, I'm uh, currently based in Oslo, Norway. So uh, I work uh, in a company which focuses on uh, cloud infrastructure, helping customers and clients to to improve their cloud infrastructure and uh, services. Uh, in the past, I used to work uh, uh, with hardware companies uh, delivering CI-CD solutions for their hardware products. So that's where I got my little bit of uh, experience with uh, KVM. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get started. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hands and uh, the attendant would pass you a mic or you can speak loudly if you wish to. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's uh, get started with the content. So uh, I actually uh, intended this to be like a tutorial uh, session or workshop session, but it seems like uh, it becomes like a talk session. But uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's first, I would uh, share the slides to you so that if you would like to um, work along with the materials on the spot, you are free to do so. Yeah, it, it, my plan was that, that everyone could get their hands dirty with KVM uh, in this session. So that's the link to the presentation. Uh, I'll show you this one time before we go through. Yeah. Everyone got the link? Yeah, I'll wait for you. That's good. Yep, let's start. Okay. Um, Kernel-based uh, virtual machines. Uh, briefly, uh, how many of you have actually used this to manage virtual machines? Okay, that's uh, quite a few. So this might be a repetition of what you have already <laughs> done in the past, but maybe uh, you can teach me uh, something new. So let's share our knowledge together. So uh, abstract, you have re uh, read it in the uh, description so I don't want to go through. So basically uh, this session is intended for attendees to uh, get familiarized with uh, KVM technologies and manage virtual machine using a command line uh, interface and also uh, using the graphical user interface if uh, we have the time. And at the end of the tutorial I would expect everyone here in the audience would at least know how to check their uh, hardware laptops or whether KVM is supported and also uh, at least know how to create, you know, modify, start, stop and um, delete the uh, kernel-based virtual machines. That's, uh, yeah, my goal for today, <laughs> for, for us. Yeah, that's a uh, 90 minutes uh, agenda. So first of all, we would uh, go through uh, how we uh, set up the kernel-based virtual machine. So we go through the installation set steps, uh, configuration steps on how to check the system is uh, fully loading the KVM uh, module and uh, so forth. And the, the large, uh, large chunk of it is mostly how to manage KVM using the CLI, command line interface. And uh, using the GUI is much more uh, similar, but it's only on the graphical user interface. Yep. And yes, um, yeah, uh, questions are welcome. So feel free to raise your hand and uh, the mics or will be passed around and we can discuss it further. Yes, uh, overview of kernel-based virtual machine. So uh, it's an open source virtualization technology built into Linux itself. So it actually enables Linux to uh, turn into a hypervisor. And we'll come back on the term of a hypervisor if uh, 
some of you are not familiar with it later on. Uh, it means also that it allows a host computer, for example, my laptop here, is able to run multiple isolated virtual environments called guests or virtual machine, uh, virtual machines, sorry, or in some uh, documentation they call it domains. So we come to that later on too. And if you have, uh, if if your system is running Linux uh, two point six point twenty or newer, uh, you have actually uh, this uh, KVM support uh, baked into your Linux kernel already. Yeah. And the default uh, virtualization technology supported, uh, for example, in Ubuntu, is uh, KVM. And now uh, for Intel and AMD hardware, KM, uh, KVM requires virtualization extensions. We will come into that uh, later on too. And KVM is also uh, available for IBM uh, Z, Linux One, and as well as ARM. So, but I don't have the opportunity to play with KVM on uh, that uh, this mentioned platform. So mostly the content today I will be focusing on uh, managing KVM using the eight, uh, x86 uh, platform. Yeah. So KVM converts um, Linux into Type 1 hypervisor as uh, mentioned. So Type 1 hypervisor which means that um, it's a bare metal hypervisor and each VM is implemented as a regular Linux process uh, scheduled by standard uh, Linux scheduler with uh, dedicated hardware components. Uh, for example, like uh, we can actually uh, create or actually plug in a dedicated virtual hardware such as uh, network cards, uh, graphic adapter, CPU memory, and this, yeah, and so forth. Yeah, regarding hypervisor, so uh, the term hypervisor is uh, is to mean that the the software uh, stack that to create and one that's a typo I have to fix so yes <laughs> virtual machines and sometimes a hypervisor is also called a virtual machine monitor uh, VMM so it actually isolates the host uh, hypervisor operating system and the resources from the virtual machines and enable the creation and management of those VMs. Yep. And also, uh, we would not be talking so much on a uh, quick emulator, but uh, we will be seeing quick emulator being used while we uh, sort of interact with the kernel virtual machines. So quick emulator is part of the KVM experience behind the user space uh, backend for it, but it also it can be used for the hardware without virtualization extension by using its uh, tiny code uh, generator. So regarding the tiny code generator, it's actually the core binary translation engine that is responsible for enabling Q quick emulator to emulate foreign processes uh, on any given supported host. And sometimes, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, virtual machines are called uh, domain. Uh, uh, I did some research on it. Uh, it's, uh, it has some history with uh, Zen in the past. So, so the term sort of uh, lingers around. So sometimes the, we would see this term domain zero. So domain zero is the first domain uh, started by the hyper, uh, hypervisor at boot. And we'll be running the Linux OS X, for example, on this machine. So this mo uh, domain is a privilege. So it may access uh, the hardware and run tools that manage other domains, so other guest uh, virtual machines. And the other virtual machines is referred sometimes as a domain U or DOM U, which the U stands for user. They are unprivileged and it's equivalent to uh, the guest system or guest uh, virtual machine. So uh, the first task, uh, if you would like to follow along, you can open your laptop 
and uh, we can actually uh, check uh, how how to verify that your support actually uh, have uh, virtualization uh, features enabled. So, for example, um, in as we mentioned earlier in the earlier slides, that KVM uh, requires a CPU with virtualization extensions. So, the most common two are the Intel virtualization virtualization technologies called Intel VT and the CPU flag is uh, VMX which stands for virtual machine extensions and AMD virtualization which is uh, known as AMD uh, V and its equivalent uh, CPU flag is uh, SVM which stands for secure virtual machine so we'll get back to this uh, later on. So uh, if uh, to actually check your system whether it's uh, supporting a KVM or uh, not KVM but supports a virtualization uh, feature, you can actually uh, try to grab uh, how many uh, to check the flags whether it exists in the CPU info. Uh, let me try it here and you can try it on your laptop too if you want to do so hey, let me check hey. just give me a moment and let me see yes this is the part we grab Screens up. Yep, that's good. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, please hold on. I can share the link. Uh, uh, yes. Let me. Uh, I can share it here actually. Uh, let me. Let me just share the link. Sorry. Um. Yeah, this is the link to the presentation. I will share it for like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. All good? Good to go. Okay. Good. Okay, now you grab. Here, um, so we can see that it actually managed to find uh, VMX, the last uh, red line. Uh, if you can see that VMX, uh, which uh, indicates that my system is uh, supported, uh, is supporting virtualization by means of uh, Intel CPU with the VMX flag. And let's get back to the presentation. Yes, that's good. I'm sharing to the screen. Yes. So, uh, if uh, by chance that your sister, if you cannot find any flags on these two, uh, probably that one, it means that your virtualization. Uh, Features is disabled on the BIOS system level, so you need to check whether it's uh, enabled on your BIOS uh, settings. Second is that uh, uh, your, your CPU doesn't support the virtualization uh, extension. The third one is that uh, because this command is only searching for these two flags, so if you are using a different processor, you might need to find a different flag for that and uh, grab, grab for to to search for it in order to check uh, it's uh, it's enabled but uh, yeah and in, in short that uh, if if uh, the flag is not there uh, KVM is still could be run but the emulator would fall back to uh, software virtualization which is much uh, much slower 
So, um, uh, for example, uh, after we have checked the CPU uh, uh, support on our system, the next step is to actually uh, install the related uh, packages uh, that enables the virtualization environment on your host machine. For example, uh, I have these instructions uh, for uh, Red Hat, Fedora, or CentOS system that uh, you can actually install uh, the virtualization uh, group packages, for example. And yeah, and other systems like Ubuntu and CentOS, it's uh, pretty much similar uh, packages that you need to enable on your host uh, machine in order for KVM to work. And the next uh, thing to check, af check is that after we have uh, installed all the required, uh, required uh, packages, so we need to enable the uh, virtualization daemon uh, library service, which is known as uh, libvirtd. Uh, so the uh, it's it's a server side uh, daemon and driver required to manage the virtualization capabilities of the KVM uh, hypervisor. So uh, here we have given uh, two commands. Here is that we have if if we want to uh, start the virtualization service, so we can system uh, CTO start uh, libvirtd. And if we want to enable it uh, on boot, so we just uh, add another extra command, so enable libvirtd. And uh, um, one more step to uh, verify that the KVM kernel modules are properly loaded. We can actually uh, do uh, LS uh, modules uh, and then grab for the KVM, neither AMD or Intel, or if you use other processors, uh, uh, you have to check the related flags. <laughs> yeah, we can actually do this on my machine here. Let's say uh, smart. So, so uh, if you can see on the screen here, uh, yes, uh, KVM Intel is uh, there, for example. And next, um, this is uh, much more for my own current testing for like uh, uh, if if we work uh, usually work a lot with uh, KVM it's it's an, a good idea to add oh sorry for the slides I forgot about it yeah is that better yeah that's good so yeah so if if we work a lot of uh, on, on KVM uh, using our local uh, user account. So it's it's a good idea to, to actually uh, append ourselves into the KVM and the librt groups so that we can uh, create and manage uh, virtual machines um, uh, without the sudo command. So yeah, it, it, it depends on your use case. But for me, this, for me to play around with KVM, this is uh, much easier for me. And uh, for it to be uh, recognized by the system, yeah, log in and log out again. So yes, so yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. And uh, one thing to note is that uh, whenever you use the graphical user interface, uh, late. Uh, later on to create a, a virtual machine. If you don't have these uh, groups uh, set up properly, usually you need to do sudo or whatever uh, privileges uh, manual enter your privileges there. So it uh, so everything will be created as a privileged uh, file system. So sometimes when you go back to your normal user, you cannot find the file system or cannot access uh, the file system. So yeah, that uh, that's, uh, could create some issues there. So um, another thing that we could uh, do uh, besides adding groups, uh, append the groups, uh, append ourselves to the groups to manage KVM, we also uh, would like to append, uh, append ourselves to the uh, quick emulator configuration. 
Um, so we actually um, append ourselves to the uh, lib uh, virtual uh, group. And also we restart the lib virtual D so that the lib virtual D can uh, uh, recognize uh, the quick emulator's uh, uh, recent changes. And yes, um, the second task is that we uh, manage uh, KVM with the command line interface. Uh, uh, is everyone uh, on on the audience uh, have set up their KVM support or follow along? Can we proceed to the next task? So Wi-Fi is a bit slow, Yeah. You you still have you can follow along, but uh, just be mindful of the you know the typical sudo versus non sudo execution. Yeah. If I give myself sudo, I'll be able to follow. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, I'll I'll give. Uh, yes. The uh, live root tree new live root bin must uh, start as all to be true. Um. At all, uh, did you mean this one? Uh, the the second command. Yeah, the user mode, uh, I found from the EKC group files that there are another group named libvirt DNS mask libvirt dash qmu. Qmu. Um, which uh, yeah, which uh, Linux distribution are you using? Uh, Ubuntu. Okay. Okay, I'm using uh, uh, Fedora, so uh, it might differ a bit, okay. but uh, maybe you could check the con. Yeah, I guess the Ubuntu documentation has that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. Hmm. But this is uh, it's good to have, but if you don't have, it's it's not the end of the rule. <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, easier for you to play around with KVM as your local user? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is has the installation run well? Okay. <coughs> sure. So, um, so um, the next task is that we want to manage uh, KVM using the command line interface. So I chose this uh, Debian example because uh, it's, uh, I guess, it's the lightest. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm <laughs> Disclaimer: I don't know whether it reaches lightest and uh, which is uh, heaviest, but uh, it's 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 uh, quite quick to run on my system. My system is quite uh, with comes with limited resources. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, let's turn on the terminal and we can install it from command line. Yes, uh, please wait. Da, da, da. Yes. Hang on. Yeah, you can see the terminal, and yeah, there's a lot of flags here. So, but uh, don't uh, be overwhelmed by it if if you are you are the first time uh, see that. Uh, it's uh, pretty well documented in the word dash install dash dash, dash help or the man pages. So uh, it's quite um, clear uh, for most of it. Like, uh, for example, if I want to use the word install command to install a virtual machine, I can actually you know, give it a name, uh, OS variant, um, Debian 11 description, uh, how many virtual CPUs I want to give it, how many RAMs I want to give it, uh, locations, uh, network, uh, Bridge and graphics and so forth. And uh, uh, one uh, extra thing 
or oh, two, two extra things that here, uh, the, the second last line, no reboot and no auto console, is that uh, to indicate that uh, whenever the installation is progressing, I don't want it to automatically reboot. So that I, I want to see the status of the uh, installation, for example. And no auto console, which means that it doesn't pop up the console after this command is executed. So usually when you run root install, it would all pop up the um, console for you to view the virtual machine progress. And the extra arguments are, which means the extra, um, the extra arguments is actually, uh, I need to read it out because it's a <laughs> long description. So this tells the kernel to use the TTY S0, uh, uh, which means the first zero port with settings of 115, 200 CPS, no stop bits and eight data bits. So it's a lot of uh, information there. So the zero port of the host and the target should be configured to match the speed and the speed, the stop bits and the data bits. So usually uh, uh, Minicom is used as the common serial communication program you, uh, to access the console from the host. Yeah, uh, we will see that uh, in an uh, example in a short while. So yeah, let's uh, run it and uh, that's it. So what it currently does now is that I, I'm installing from uh, external network. Uh, if you you if you see that, I'm installing from the uh, ftpdebian.org. So it's like a online network installer location. So I don't actually need to actually download an ISO to to actually uh, run the installation look from locally. But provided that we have a uh, good uh, internet bandwidth. So now uh, for the next uh, thing that we want to actually connect to the guest uh, virtual machine. So we <coughs> use a uh, uh, virtual-river. So we want to connect to QEMU session session which means the local user and uh, wait for Debian 11. Yes, uh, ah, this is a bit silly but uh, I don't think, oh no, this is a bad example. Okay, wish me luck. Uh, assuming that uh, we click everything by default, So it's actually grabbing files. Uh, uh, it already grabbed the files like the init, uh, init files and running it uh, locally in your local virtual machines. And now it's uh, actually running the installation process. And let's see. I can't see anything from here, so I've done this a uh, couple of times. So. <laughs> so basically, you know all this click, click, uh, select location, select keyboard, uh, all these things, it actually can be automated. Uh, we will get to that uh, at the end of the talk uh, because this is uh, a bit uh, advanced. So actually, we, we can actually uh, automate the entire installation process without me clicking every step. This cannot work. I think it's asking for root password. Let me see. Okay. That we, yes. I'm creating a local user. Yeah. Back to the screen. I think it's hard drive. 
lots of configuration. Okay, let me check. This doesn't go. It's uh, doing um, partitioning to the disk. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So it's actually grabbing the uh, common installation packages uh, from the network external network location, like uh, the common. You know, bash the the Linux uh, um, runtime, all those things. Now it's grabbing from the internet and uh, installing it in the guest machine. So this would uh, take some time. We will let it run in the background. Yes. Oh, um, so yeah, you can just uh, remove that uh, network bridge okay. and it will automatic, uh, automatically uh, use the default one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just made an error that the unknown voice name Debian 11 uh, is working for Cray OS, no, Raspberry. Try changing the OS version to Debian 10. Yeah, I think it can fix the problem with Debian 10. Yeah, yeah, you can change to Deb Debian 10. Um, yeah. And the OS variant, you can actually, let me check. Uh, word install list OS variant. Uh, give me a minute. So I give you the command that I think different system has different OS variant lists. So let me try on my system. Aha. Hmm. Okay, let's let's try this one. You can see. So if we do a uh, root install uh, minus minus OS minus variant list, so it will give you a list of supported. Uh, OS variant that you can actually pass in as a parameter. Yes, uh, it was, that's bad. Yeah, as you can see here, a lot of things. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we get to there now. Uh, if you go back to the terminal, um, okay, uh, let me let me check. It's coming in the next slide. Uh, I guess you have this. Um, let me close this terminal first. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Before we get to that question, so one thing uh, that is missing from this. Uh, uh, steps is also how we specify our uh, virtual uh, disk that is used by the uh, guest virtual machine. So we did not cover it here. So it, it actually uh, creates it using the default values. And uh, that would uh, also include uh, uh, going through the documentations of Quick Emulator. And there are some uh, file system that we need to specify and what uh, type that uh, it can, uh, should be supporting, what size uh, does it want, uh, what is the maximum size that we allow for this uh, guest uh, virtual machine to expand to, for example. But uh, we will not be covering it uh, today uh, for time reasons. So, but uh, do note that uh, you can actually specify your own custom uh, virtual disk uh, using this uh, command. So, yeah, and you actually can sort of uh, duplicate the disk if you want to create, uh, let's say, a parallel 
four or five uh, same um, same just virtual machine containing the same data, for example. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, you got this message, right, uh, Kim? Yeah, you got this message, right? Yeah, uh, can you see that uh, the escape character is uh, control right square bracket? I can show you here. Let's see. Um, let's see. So um, yes, this is how we also can connect to the serial console of the. Uh, let me hide the slides. I'm sorry. So this uh, command also enables us to uh, connect to the serial console messages of the guest virtual machine that is running. So, uh, for example, in our uh, here that uh, we can use a uh, virtual uh, virtualization shell console Debian eleven, uh, which is the name of our gas virtual machine that uh, we are running earlier. So let's get back to there. So word sh console. Yeah, I'll just use a new terminal because that. Uh, yes, uh, yes, let's do this one. Word slash console. Yeah, so you can see them. Uh, it's actually reading the minicom messages uh, from the gas virtual machine. <laughs> but currently, it's, it's not uh, displaying anything because it's uh, running in the background. Let me check the status. No, oh. uh, it's still installing stuff. Yeah, I don't know why. Let's see. Yeah, I need to choose the desktop environment, so I'll choose the latest one, and it still it will take probably five minutes. Or Minutes. I'll just show it back. And yes, uh, where is that? Console, console, where is that console? Ah, okay. Oh. Let me go to that. Yeah. Control, right back at. Manage to exit right. Yes, uh, we will wait for a while for the some of the attendees here. Um, everything proceeding well. Good. Then we can uh, actually. I'll wait for mine to finish install. Uh, it's still installing. Um, let's continue then. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. So uh, uh, we, before we 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 use virtual shell commands to to actually manage KVM, there are a few things that we need to know, uh, such as uh, the guest virtual machine states and uh, types. Uh, several uh, virtualization shell commands are affected by the types of the guest uh, virtual machine. So the guest virtual machines usually uh, have two types, transient and persistent. So transient would mean that a transient guest 
or gas virtual machine, it will not survive a reboot. So it's like a, a system that exists uh, every mile or it's, it doesn't, it's not persistent. And a persistent virtual machine, it would survive reboot and exist until you actually uh, manually deleted it. Yeah. And um, during the life cycle of a virtual machine, the virtualization daemon would actually categorize this gas virtual machine in any of the following states. Undefined, which means that the gas virtual machine has not been uh, defined or created. Uh, so at this stage that a uh, leap virtual, uh, virtualization would not uh, be aware of any gas in this state and will not report about the gas in uh, the gas virtual machine that in that 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 has this uh, undefined state. And the second one is sh uh, shut off. It's a uh, self-explanatory. So it's a uh, it's the virtual machine is defined but not running. So it's turned off. There's no uh, process running on the gas machine. Uh, it's just put in a state that uh, it can be started again. Running, which means the virtual gas virtual machine is active, has been defined properly, and uh, it's uh, running. So this state, uh, the running state, can be used uh, by both transient and persistent uh, state gas virtual machine. And pause would mean that the gas virtual machine execution on the hypervisor has been suspended or the state has been temporarily stored until it is resumed. So gas virtual machine that is in this state are not aware of th they have been suspended <laughs> and do not no no notice that the time have passed when they resume. So we have to be aware of that. And save, it's quite similar to pause, but the gas virtual machine configuration is safe into a persistent storage, for example, on your hard disk. And it's the same as uh, the pause set state that uh, it doesn't know that it has been paused or so it doesn't know that the time has already passed when you actually restarted it. So these are some of the states that we need to be aware uh, for the life cycle of the virtual machine. Yes. Sure. Oh, I don't have a clear answer on that because I haven't tried it out myself. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, I would, I would if 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 I had that if I encountered that situation, I would prefer to put it in a safe stat, uh, safe s state, so that uh, it could be resumed later on. But I I cannot confirm it at this point. <coughs> Moment. I'm sorry. And uh, yes, we can also display the. Yeah, this is more for debugging purpose. So we can actually uh, uh, get the info uh, of the virtualization library version. And if you append the minus timers daemon. So it's actually uh, a useful uh, argument that we can ask the uh, daemon to display the uh, virtualization daemon information too. So we can actually try that out actually. Let's see. Um, uh, word essay. 
page uh, da, da, da. version yes and, and uh, yeah running this demo yes you can see that here it has uh, the last line is running hypervisor and then the it has uh, another extra information that uh, it says that running against daemon uh, 810 so it, it helps to for you to debug uh, sometimes yes and let's go back to yep. and uh, yes and now we come to the stage of uh, we can actually connect to the hypervisor uh, using the word ash connect and uh, give it a host name or the a UI and uh, options uh, optional arguments uh, read only so the most commonly used uh, URIs are uh, QEMU uh, tree slash uh, system uh, if the guest virtual machine is running under that uh, uh, domain or, or that um, URI it means that it it because slash 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 system is owned by a root uh, group and uh, the triple slash session is usually uh, unprivileged users like uh, local users so you just uh, have to be aware of the differences when when you try to uh, root slash list guest virtual machine sometimes that uh, we cannot find our guest virtual machine using our local user because it was created uh, using uh, a privileged user such as root for example so don't don't be worried if you cannot find your your virtual machine if you have created because sometimes it's just uh, to to check whether are you uh, running it against the correct ui so this uh, we have to just to be sure about LXE is uh, the local Linux container but we will not uh, touch it uh, um, in this example so uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have a question no okay so uh, to establish a, connect, a session to connect your guest virtual machine uh, with you as the local user so you can uh, Word hash hash connect and uh, quick emulator using the triple slash uh, session. So this would actually means that you are using uh, virtual shell uh, virtual legend shell to connect to the session as a local user. We and and usually this uh, connect and with the URI. It's uh, you can actually uh, skip it uh, when you use the word hash uh, command because it will get the default or the options that you already set it as a default value. So, for example, in the my next slide, uh, this slide, you can see that I did not specify the connect argument there because I'm assuming that the word hash would grab the uh, default. Uh, UI to use in this example but we can try this version list or uh, let me check whether the presentation yes yes oh no yes uh, it's yeah it's still installing so we don't mind it so let's open the new uh, yes okay we can try to use connect uh, qemu uh, session and list all oh. let me see Yeah, I have to check 
how do we configure? Maybe I'm giving it the wrong command. But yeah, uh, I might be wrong about the WSH uh, connect uh, command. I'll, I'll get back to that later on uh, if I have the time. So uh, in the current slide, yes, this one. So uh, if we want to list the, uh, all the existing virtual machines that we are managing to our hypervisor or on, on our host machine, host, uh, machine we can actually uh, do a virtual hash uh, list, minus minus all. Or if you just want to see the inactive ones, you can uh, pass like inactive. Uh, we can actually see virtual hash list, let's help. So there's some uh, arguments here. So, yeah, uh, we can actually um, give it uh, inactive to list inactive domains, or give all sort of list transients with snapshots, uh, without snapshots, uh, for example, and what kind of state they are in. So yes. And if you want to list the UUID or just the name or the ID or, uh, in the table format, yeah. yeah, there are some options that you can always uh, explore using the man pages or the help command. Let me check the sh connect command. Uh, It's a read only. This is built in command after share. So, okay. Okay, that's just just to reconnect the hypervisor. Yeah, my bad. I understood it wrongly. Yes, uh, let's continue on to yeah. Also we can display uh, to get the information regarding our hypervisor, uh, hostname and sys info. We can try that now. Host name, yeah, yeah. Which is my host name? Says info. Would, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not working. Says info. Why is it not? Uh, is, uh, I'll put XML string. Okay, I need to check why it's not uh, working. Fail to get, maybe I need sudo, I'm not sure. Yeah, I need sudo. <laughs> yeah, so um, this uh, where well, sys info would actually get uh, XML representation of your uh, host uh, system, if you can see it. Yep. Yeah, and uh, taking screenshots of uh, virtual machine, uh, this might be helpful for some uh, cases. Uh, let's try this one. Sh uh, screenshot. And, uh, you give it the domain, uh, you can actually specify the domain ID, uh, which is like an integer ID, or the name, uh, in our case it's Debian 11 with a capital D, or the UUID, uh, yeah. And if the guest virtual machine have multiple screens attached to it, you can actually specify uh, which screen that you want to take uh, the for the screenshot, yeah. Let's try this, Debian 11. Yeah, so it's saved to PPM. Let's see where is it. Yes, display. Yes, this is the screenshot that I have. It's asking me to reboot. So I will reboot it. Yes. And yeah, 
and and if you can see in the top uh, terminal, you can see that once it reboot, uh, it doesn't actually reboot because I already specified in our in our installation instruction no reboot, so it doesn't really actually reboot even though inside the guest virtual machine that we click reboot. So uh, in order to uh, end, we, if we check the status of the virtual machine again, it's the state is uh, shut off. And let's say UUID. Yeah. And yeah, that's how you get the UUID or ID, I think. Oh, maybe. Let's do a table. Yeah. ID is zero because uh, it's not any. Yep. Uh, in order to start it again, uh, it's the next slide. Yes. Um, um, yeah, to start it again, it's uh, quite uh, simple. Uh, we'll sh start, uh, give it uh, the identifier of the virtual machine. Uh, you can pass in console and all the other optional arguments. And um, uh, for example, console, it will attach the terminal running we'll sh to the domain console device. Uh, for example, uh, this would be running on level three. And pause, for example, and if this is uh, supported by the KVM driver, it actually start the gas machine uh, from a pause state. And auto destroy would mean that you want it to be uh, automatically deleted after the gas virtual machine. Uh, no, uh, it will be automatically uh, destroyed when the world SH connects, uh, disconnects from the virtual machine. Yes, uh, and other other options you can uh, go through the documentation. Uh, there are tons of very good documentation online. And let's see our uh, yeah, let's try to start it again. Let's uh, let's go back to this one, and let's see will sh start Debian eleven, and then we. I don't press enter first. I want to SSH connect. Uh, no, console. Yes, console. Debian. So I want you to see the console messages from the guest virtual machine doing boot. And first, uh, virtual shell start Debian 11. And then virtual console. Yes. You can see the. Uh, Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry for that. So you can see that immediately when I uh, entered virtual shell start Debian 11, and then when I use the virtual shell console Debian 11, it will show me the uh, console messages uh, directly from the guest virtual machine inside my terminal. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me walk in. Uh, Yes. Uh, yep. um, yes, it's running. And uh, if uh, if I want to see the uh, quick emulator screen, uh, yes, uh, we're as would we were. So you can see the uh, it presents me the login screen for the newly installed uh, virtual machine that we have just run early on. Yeah. So if you enter the credentials according to your settings that you entered during the installation step, you get to the uh, desktop environment. Yes. And yep. And let me. Yes, um, let me go back to the presentation. Yes, start. We have uh, uh, seen it already. So start, uh, we start the virtual machine that was already created earlier and currently 
is in an inactive state or for example uh, shut off. So if we want to uh, configure a virtual machine to start automatically at boot, we can actually use the auto start uh, uh, subcommand of the virtual shell. And this would, uh, this would automatically uh, boots up the guest virtual machine every time the host machine boots up. So if that's what you're looking for. And reboot uh, virtual machine, we can actually try that actually, let's see. Uh, where's the word viewer? So let's go back to our. Oh no. You can see my mouse. Okay. Yeah, you can see it here. Okay, I'll put it here so that you can see it partially. Uh, yes, and then show you the terminal. And let's see, uh, exit, so. Let's clear. And then we shall reboot. Reboot Debian 11. So you saw that it's uh, being reboot. Let me check the status now. Um, this uh, table is running, but uh, yes, uh, it's running. If you can see the, uh, yep. So that's uh, one way that you can interact uh, with a virtual machine. If you want to reboot, you can reboot using the virtual shell. And uh, there are uh, a, a few um, uh, reboot. Uh, mode name that you can uh, read in the documentation like um, uh, for example in in this command uh, let me show you the slides again yeah it's yeah so in this example I I, I can actually pass in uh, in it the CTL uh, reboot mode for example so uh, this is something extra, uh, depending on the time. Uh, yeah, we, we just go through it uh, verbally. Um, so we can actually save the guest virtual machine configuration as an XML file for, um, for various purpose. Um, yeah, so we can actually um, use save and then put in your do, uh, guest virtual machine uh, identifier and then the file name and then uh, running is uh, this uh, we have to explain this running and pause um, running would means that when when the save occurs that it will override the state recorded in the save image to start the guest virtual machine as running and if we put in pause it means uh, in in the same way. So it overrides the safe state that is recorded in the XML file to start the guest virtual machine as pause state virtual machine. So yeah, that's uh, what was defined in the documentation. Um, And define. So, if we want to uh, define our guest VM by hand, like from scratch XML, we can actually do that. <laughs> uh, you can actually um, using the define command, but I will not get into that. I'm not in. I'm, I'm not an expert in that. And uh, we can actually extract uh, one thing we can actually also extract the guest XML file uh, for 
maybe for backups or for uh, uh, future analysis uh, whatsoever but uh, let's try out this I haven't tried it out myself so save image dynamic somewhere let's try out save image save image done XML Fail to open file save. This for extra guys. Okay, let's save it. Okay, this um, this will actually require the uh, virtual machine to be uh, in a safe state. So because my machine is still running, so I cannot run this. And uh, virtual shell save image edit. It's uh, also, it will also indicate that uh, when the gas virtual machine is safe, the resulting image would indicate that the virtual machine should be restored into uh, running or post that as uh, the optional arguments. So this one would, uh, um, it's, it, it, it also would uh, save the image uh, edit file there. But uh, yeah, I will just list this for uh, reference, but uh, we will not uh, run that as an example. And resuming, um, maybe we could try this rule as resume. Uh, let's try this one here. Where is my, you can see my stat stay. Okay, good. Uh, let's try clear SH resume. Yes. Resume. Uh, no, let's pause. Is there a pause? Tried this before. Yeah. Does anyone know how to pause it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't tried it myself, sorry. But uh, yeah. I would. Uh, yeah. There is a command to resume, so I've assumed that it must have a command to pause, but uh, I'll look it up later on. But <laughs> yeah. So this. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Let's try. Let's do it suspended. Thank you very much. <laughs> and this. Yeah, and you can see that uh, when we suspend it, uh, it's in pause state. And we can actually resume that. And then if we go to the state, yeah, it's running again. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yes. Vert viewer, you mean? Uh, no, it's, it's not taking an XML file. I can go back to the slides again. Um, that's uh, 44, it's 20, let me show you this one, yes, 24, you mean this one? No, this is what you said, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, the XML file, uh, I think I, I uh, mis-explained uh, uh, this, this is actually, uh, we can actually Define. Ah. Uh. Uh, 
Let's find out, actually. Good question. So uh, the question was asked, uh, there was a question that was asked here that, uh, is there any difference between uh, word sh and uh, word sh create and word sh um, define? Let's see, uh, create. Mm -hmm. Create a uh, it create a domain from an XML file. Create a domain and define. Uh, let's see. Uh, define. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah yeah sorry. Define. Yes. Okay. So the the difference I I what I understood from the uh, documentation is that a create would create the XML file and also start it automatically. But define is just defining the XML file, but that's it. Uh, not normal action is done against the XML file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, resume, we have done that. Uh, display host physical machine name, uh, not interesting. Yeah, maybe we can try rule access dome info uh, to get some information. Uh, Dome info Debian 11, for example. Yeah, uh, it would actually show you some statis or statistics regarding the gas virtual ma machine running uh, underneath your uh, hypervisor. So you can see that um, uh, the UID, the uh, CPU time and all sorts of uh, interesting uh, information. Yes. Uh, Word SH Doom ID is just to get the ID of the virtual machine. So I guess this is one. Yeah. Because I only have one running. Um, this is. Uh, something extra which I cannot show you because I'm not running thing I'm not running a job there um, uh, inside the virtual machine but uh, usually when we run a gas virtual machine we would run some tasks like maybe uh, a CI CD pipeline running inside the uh, uh, gas virtual machine so this would actually uh, a pause uh, or, or try to abort the job that is running inside the gas virtual machine. And this uh, would also uh, list some uh, information about the job. I'm not sure this is running anything, but we can try uh, DOM job info Debian 11. Yeah, there's uh, no job. Uh, uh, inside the uh, virtual machine. Uh, yeah, so this is just uh, some helper tools to, you know, translate the uh, guest virtual machine between ID name and UUID. So, yeah, domain state, uh, yep. State, uh, if you want a single state, yes. Uh, yes. You can see here DOM state running and yeah, shut down. Everyone must know how to shut down. Uh, uh, KVM. Uh, so the command is simple, virtual shell shut down and uh, same as a uh, reboot, you can give it the uh, shutdown mode name. And in this example, uh, ACPI. Uh, mode. So let's uh, let's see. 
this is our Debian desktop running. It's not running anything now. Yeah, okay, it's sleeping. So let's uh, shut it down. Let us just sh uh, shut down. Oh, I cannot spell properly now. Debian 11. So it's being shut down. And if we list the state, the state is back to shut off. Yeah, suspend. Yes, <laughs> I forgot about it. And uh, reset would, uh, this is like the, you know, the reset button uh, that we have, or, you know, we long press our laptop to force it to shut down. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to share the slide. Yeah. So, yes, um, shut down, we have covered it. Suspend, uh, as we have uh, used earlier, to suspend and then to resume. And then to reset, and this is, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the same as we press the reset button in our uh, old computers where we have this reset button, or we long press on our laptop uh, power button. So this would actually sort of cue the power and uh, reinitialize re the internal state. So um, this would mean also there, uh, there are risks of data loss if we use this command. So this, uh, just use this uh, if, if you need to do so. <laughs> yeah, and um, stop running gas virtual machine to restart it later. So this command saves and uh, destroy or stop a running gas virtual machine so that it can be restarted from the same state at the later time. It's uh, a bit complex to, to explain here, but so when, when it is used with a virtual start command, it is automatically started from this save point. So uh, in, in short, uh, it's like um, you want to save and destroy, but you also want to uh, sort of uh, keep a part of it so that you can actually resurrect it uh, in a later stage, so to speak. Um, yes, this is some uh, extra uh, commands that is uh, dealing with uh, uh, listing, creating, applying, and deleting a snapshot. So like in, in managing virtual machine, you usually want to take a snapshot to, to have a, a history of the changes in the guest virtual machine. So uh, this command would, uh, would help us to actually do this um, for us. And yes, undefined would actually mean that we undefined the and undefined and remove it completely. So if it's uh, if it's if the virtual machine is active, which means that it's running, when we run this command undefined, it would mean that the virtual machine would a transition from a persistent state to a transient state because the definition of the virtual machine has been uh, undefined by virtual shell so but it's still running so whenever so when that execution ends or it uh, shut down so that would uh, be gone so let's uh, yeah, and if we want to force a guest virtual machine to, you know, s stop immediately, we can actually use a uh, word destroy. Um, command. So this is like a, this is to mean 
a false, uh, false uh, shutdown. It's an ungraceful shutdown. So uh, data loss is uh, would be expected there. So uh, in short, uh, we we have various way of uh, terminating uh, virtual machines. Shutdown would means that okay, I send a signal to the guest virtual machine. Uh, I want you to sh shut down uh, properly. Uh, take your time to do it, but uh, please uh, do it uh, everything gracefully. And the other way is that to use the destroy subcommand, which is like, okay, uh, power off now. And undefined, which means that it would remove the uh, definition of the guest virtual machine uh, from uh, virtual shell uh, listing. So it no, no longer recognized by the virshh hash command. So yes, uh, this, this tree, yeah, you just have to be aware of. Yeah. And some other related commands is like a uh, hash node info edit. Uh, we could try that actually, uh, node info. Uh, let's let's exit this one. Let's do this one. Um, is it there? Okay, good. Uh, sh node info Debian eleven. Uh, is it running? Uh, yes, I think we stopped it earlier. Uh, this. Yeah, it's uh, been shut off. Okay, let's try real sh edit then. So um, if we go back to our presentation, you know, virtual SH edit, remember that uh, we can define the guest virtual machine using the XML file. So uh, to edit, you can actually use virtual SH edit. So you can actually go through the XML file and uh, to modify it manually. So usually we don't need to do this uh, manually by hand, but it's good to know uh, where you can find the configuration and to investigate uh, what, went, what went wrong. Yeah, that's it. And with the F top, with the F, uh, it's just to uh, list the file system that is being used by the guest uh, or by the hypervisor. I assume, let's try. Uh, let's, sorry. FS, do this. Yeah, to list the F to set. Display free size on the virtual file system, yes. And root top, this would actually be similar to our top command uh, when we run the top command on our local host, uh, local machine. So since that we already shut down our virtual machines, uh, nothing is running in the background. And root, uh, we have uh, go through the virtualization dash viewer. You, you see the graphical user interface of the guest virtual machine. And the pool list all, SH pool is all. Yes, um, this would mean the, the list of pools that um, the virtual machine is used, uh, the virtualization is, you can set up multiple pools of, uh, for, for segregation purposes or, 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 or organization. But I haven't used it uh, quite much, so I would not go deep into that. Yeah, would install OS variant list. So uh, I guess we have experience here at the audience that uh, it's also depending on your 
Linux distribution, whether it returns an updated list or not. And yeah, I have a few more uh, examples, like uh, you can install Ubuntu, Fedora, or what sort uh, from the network and also from ISO image if you have. And some of the uh, troubles that I have, uh, not troubles, but some of the issues that I uh, experience is that sometimes uh, it refuses to undefine and because uh, the domain manage safe image exists so I actually have to uh, use the manage safe remove to remove the image for the domain uh, virtual machine and then only I can undefine so these are some things that uh, we need to yeah, be aware of and sometimes uh, the network uh, uh, virtualization network uh, devices are not there. Uh, it's uh, because uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, I did a restart of the virtualization services. And uh, when I do a bridge CTL show uh, in my example here, so it works again. So. Sometimes it's, it's good to uh, check whether a restart of the virtualization service helps or not because it just refreshes the uh, virtualization configuration. Yeah, uh, and in some uh, Linux uh, installation, you would probably, uh, the installation hangs at the BIOS screen with probing EDD equals off to disable. So it just hangs there. So what we need to do is that we have to actually add another extra kernel arguments with uh, EDD equals off so that it will just uh, bypass that uh, EDD checks. So EDD means that uh, BIOS enhance uh, this uh, uh, device services. Uh, this is the fail to get domain um, so we need to ensure that the specified storage pool has correct permissions and path. Uh, we can actually try that uh, just to show you pool dump XML. Pool dump XML. Pool dump XML. Uh, yes, so yeah, if we do this uh, pull dump XML uh, command, it will actually list uh, which uh, path that uh, we store our uh, file system for our virtual machine. For example, uh, in my uh, context, is that it's my under my home directory, local, share, lib, uh, root, images. And uh, the permissions, we have to also check that, uh, are we allowed to write and read from there? So sometimes if we run a sudo uh, against a different pool with a different file permission, then uh, it, it, it might uh, create some issues for us. Yes, uh, get back to that. Um, here we go. Yes. So yes, if if you we encounter fail to get domain, um, check that uh, whether the storage pool have correct user permissions and the correct path. Are we loading it for or referencing the correct path? Uh, cannot access storage file uh, from the qemu uh, command. So. Uh, same like the word sh uh, append group, so we have to append ourselves to the uh, qemu uh, configuration into the proper groups. And yes, and sometimes um, if, for example, if you did do the sudo uh, append groups, sometimes you will face like this example, uh, word sh netlist or 
why I cannot see my default network, which should be exist uh, on all uh, services. Yep. Um, yeah, I have uh, two minutes or one minute left. So, yeah, as ex yeah, we I don't have time to go through the graphical user interface, but it's quite straightforward. You can play around with the uh, virtual machine manager. It's uh, I have some uh, screenshots there, so you can go through at your own free time. Yes, uh, 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 I'm open for questions. If uh, anyone has some that I could answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, for the install and the define, they the same, right? Just that one is using an XML, like a file-based version, and one is in CLI arguments. Yes. Uh, the question uh, was asked here is that uh, the word install command and the word sh define XML is just a different approach to create a definition for the guest virtual machine. Yes. Mm. Uh, but the, are they line for line the same? Like, for example, if inside the CLI, I will do dash dash network. In the XML, would I use the angle record network to define? Uh, yes. Yes. Mo uh, yeah. yeah. We just, we just have to yeah try it out. Yeah. I think it, the VSH uh, install would I'm I'm sure that it pretty much translated to an XML file when you do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. When when it when you word install, it would talk to the word SH and then uh, word SH would define that as an XML file in the background. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have some bonus uh, tasks if you want to do it at home. Try to uh, do preceding or kickstart. Uh, you know, skipping all the yes, yes, no, no thing on the uh, installation process and try to assign a host USB to your guest virtual machine. Just for a test. It's a uh, fun. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, if there's no further questions. Yes, I uh, appreciate uh, everyone uh, spending time here. Uh, and I don't want to interrupt your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>